Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called Thor and the Stolen Hammer, an adaptation of a Norse myth written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. Thor and the Stolen Hammer. Everyone knows Thor, Norse god of thunder and champion of fighters. With his magic hammer Mjolnir in his hands, he can fell foes, slay serpents, and shatter the stones that make up the world. But what happens when the thunderstorm of a god loses his hammer? And how far will he go to get it back? Well, it all starts with some giants who want to get married. You see, one morning, Thor woke up in his sprawling bed heaped with furs for blankets. Like every morning, he rolled over and mumbled a sleepy, Hello, beautiful, to his hammer, reaching out to give it a little hug. But that day, he rolled over to find that his hammer was missing. Missing! He searched all his furs and pillows and even crawled under the bed, but nothing. The magic hammer was gone. Loki! Thor bellowed at once, of course suspecting his trickster god uncle. Loki was always playing pranks like turning Thor's pillows into pigs or his toothbrush into a snake. He once made Thor's favorite coat look like a juicy roast, and Thor started eating, only noticing the illusion when he choked on his own buttons. It was enough to make the thunder god scream, and scream he did, over and over and over, until Loki appeared in his room in a puff of smoke. You bellowed for me? Loki asked, a crooked smile on his lips. Thor grabbed him by the shirt and lifted him into the air. My hammer is missing. What have you done? Loki's face went pale and he held up his hands his crooked smile sliding right off his lips. He knew better than to tease Thor about Mjolnir. Well, I had nothing to do with it, Loki said, and for once he was telling the truth. Then you better help me find it, growled Thor, his bushy beard bristling. He set Loki down, not gently, and resumed stomping about his room. Relax for a moment, you bull, and let me try a spell. Loki said. Thor narrowed his eyes, but sat on his bed and waited. Make it quick. Loki nodded and conjured up all the trickster magic he could muster. Slowly, the room shimmered and faded, and suddenly day turned to night. What is this? asked Thor. This illusion will show us what happened last night. Stand with me and watch. Loki continued to wave his hands, and the illusion spread. The pair saw a version of Thor snoring in his bed. One massive muscled arm curled around his hammer. You make a cute couple, said Loki. Move it along, growled Thor. Loki laughed and rolled his hands in the air. Time in the illusion sped up, and then there they saw a dark shadow spread on the floor and ripple like a puddle. From that puddle came a giant hand, bigger than Thor's own, nearly as big as the bed itself. The hand reached from the shadows onto the bed, grabbed a hold of Mjolnir, and then pulled it back into the shadow. But not before Thor and Loki saw a face peeking out, the face of evil Thrym, the king of the giants. Why, that no good thief, bellowed Thor. Those giants think they can use dark magic and steal Mjolnir? They think they can steal my baby? I won't stand for this. I'm going to smash every giant until I get a hammer back. I'm going to smash them so hard that their great-great-grandkids will feel it. I'm going to... I'm going to... Thor sputtered and raged his face as red as an apple and shiny with sweat. Easy, friend, said Loki. This is bad news. The giants are a powerful foe, and with Mjolnir, they will be more powerful still. 
We need to get that hammer back. But if we go charging in there, it will be war. And who knows what will happen? So what do we do then? asked Thor. Give me a day to investigate, said Loki. A day to sneak and spy, you mean, grumbled Thor. Well, yes, said Loki. But this time I'm sneaking and spying for you, so it doesn't feel fair for you to complain about it. One day, said Thor, holding up a finger big as a sausage link. After that, it's war. Loki nodded and went at once to see the goddess Freya. He found her sitting out in the sun, golden and beautiful as ever. She was on a marble bench, tending to the two magnificent cats that were her constant companions. She was feeding them bites of meat as they meowed and wove about her legs, tails swaying. Loki, she said, looking up with a small smile. I hope you aren't here to make any mischief. Not today, my lady, Loki said. Thor's hammer has been stolen by the giants, by King Thrym himself. <gasps> Mjolnir? Freya gasped. Without that weapon, we are all exposed. There could be a war, one that we might not win without Thor at full strength. Exactly, said Loki. So I was hoping I could borrow your magic cloak of feathers. I intend to fly to the realm of the giants, Jotunheim, and talk to the king to see if there is some way to retrieve the hammer without a war. Take the cloak, the goddess said, pulling it out of thin air. It was a beautiful thing, long and smooth and soft, with feathers from colored falcons imbued with her magic. Be quick and no tricks. No tricks, agreed Loki putting on the cloak. At least, not on you. Freya rolled her eyes, and Loki waved his arms, the cloak of feathers sending him soaring through the sky. Thanks to its magic, the trickster soon arrived at the realm of the giants, and there he found evil King Thrym himself, sitting on the steps of his colossal castle. Hello, little bird, said Thrym. Come for your nephew's hammer. Why don't you land and we can talk? Oh, more like I land and you can crush me, <laughs> laughed Loki. Come now, where's the hammer? What do you want? I've used my own magic to hide the hammer deep in the center of the earth, beyond the reach of even the dwarves and their mining. There's no way to retrieve it except with my own magic. Then what do you want, said Loki. Surely we can make a deal. Thrym laughed a giant laugh, like boulders rolling down a mountain. I know better than to deal with the god of the tricksters. The only deal will be my deal. I will take the goddess Freya for my wife. What? Loki said, laughing and aghast all at once. Oh, she'd never have you. Then you'll never have the hammer. Oh, come now, said Loki. Maybe we could... Enough, the giant said, suddenly stern. This isn't a negotiation. You've heard my demand. Bring me Freya or lose Mjolnir forever. He stood and went into his castle, slamming the giant stone door behind him with a terrible finality. Oh boy, said Loki, still flapping in the air. This should go over well. He flew back to Asgard and summoned Thor and Freya together. He told them of the giant's demand, and it went over about as well as he expected. Easy then, said Thor. Go and marry the brute. Freya shot Thor a venomous look. Excuse me, I'm as much a god as you are, and I'll marry who I like. Try to bring me to this king Thrym, and you won't like what happens. Thor harumphed and threw up his hands. The giant demands a bride! Freya shrugged, lips curled. Then you marry him. Oh, wait now, said Loki, slipping between the two before they started wrestling like they had when they were all kids. That's not such a bad idea. Thor could be the bride. What? said Freya. 
Okay, said Thor. No, no, said Loki. Listen now, I have a plan. A plan? bellowed Thor. What do you recommend then? Tricks and lies? Well, yes, I always recommend tricks and lies, said Loki. It just so happens in this case that I'm right. They argued for the rest of the evening, but in the end, they agreed to Loki's plan. Loki would go back to the castle of the giants, and Thor, disguised as Freya, would go with him. Loki expected the Thunder God to protest against dressing as a bride, but Thor didn't seem to mind at all. What's a dress but a long tunic, he said, and I'd wear a hundred dresses to see my Mjolnir again. Good man, said Freya. Now wait here while I get you set up. Freya provided her biggest dress, and Loki made it even larger with his magic. They also made a magic veil to disguise Thor's face. It was barely see-through, but thanks to Loki's magic, the wearer looked golden as Freya underneath. Once dressed, Loki and Thor flew back to Jotunheim and knocked on the door of King Thrym's castle. This better work, growled Thor. You better be quiet, said Loki. The illusion doesn't work on your voice and you sound like a bear chewing a hornet's nest. Thor grunted but fell silent. The door swung open and the king stood before them, towering tall, dressed in his royal best. King Thrym, said Loki, bowing grandly in his formal robes. As you so kindly requested, I have brought the Lady Freya here for you to marry. The king's eyes lit up. It was clear he had not expected his desperate plan to work, and he was beyond excited to have Freya there in front of him. My bride, he said, I see you come in a dress and veil as is the custom, but I can see your golden features through the gauze. Come in, we shall have a wedding feast to end all wedding feasts, and at the end, we shall be married. Does that sound good to you, my love? Thor nodded, and Loki cut in. She has sworn not to speak again until she is a woman married. She said none but her mighty husband should hear her golden voice. Thrym smiled even wider. Wonderful. Now come in and let the feast begin. The giant king clapped his hands and other giants, men and women, emerged from all over the castle. Soon they had gathered together colossal tables and began to bring out tray after tray of the finest foods, and Thor felt his stomach grumble. He had never been able to resist a good feast. Loki and Freya were granted a place of honor, sitting at the king's table next to Thrym himself. Everybody eat, the king declared, and then he turned to Loki and the person he thought was his bride and said, Don't try to keep up with us, he laughed. The appetite of the giants is legendary. <laughs> Loki laughed, his own appetite legendary as well, and Thor licked his lips. He'd been so worried about his hammer that he hadn't eaten in nearly two days, and he fell upon the food with a ravenous hunger. Thrym and the other giants could only look on in awe as Thor, still disguised as Freya, ate an entire ox, fourteen salmon, all of the desserts, and washed everything down with an entire barrel of mead. My bride, the king said, eyes wide as Freya crunched down through a leg bone to suck the marrow. I've never seen anyone eat so much, never mind such a fair little thing as you. Ah, said Loki, cutting in smoothly. The fair goddess has been sick with her love for you. She hasn't been able to eat until she found herself safely in your presence. What a wonderful woman, King Thrym said. I know she wants to keep her face hidden until we are wed, but might I have just one look at her beautiful eyes? Before Loki could reply, King Thrym took the veil on Thor's face and pulled it down just an inch. He saw two fierce eyes and bushy brows staring at him nearly crackling with anger and thunder. I've never seen such fierceness, the giant said, leaning back. My king, said Loki, fixing Thor's magic veil. She's been awake for weeks. 
She said she couldn't sleep without her love by her side. Her eyes are only tired, waiting for your marriage to soothe them. King Thrym was nearly in tears. What a beautiful woman. What a devoted love. We must be wed at once. The giants in the room began to hoot and holler, calling for the wedding to take place. The altar was brought out, and Thor as Freya was made to walk down the aisle. Wait, called Loki. Before you are wed, we must have the bridal gift. We must have the hammer Mjolnir to seal the union. Of course, said the king of the giants. He held out one hand and began a magic spell. Soon, the earth below the castle rippled and shook, and then, with a strange grinding slurp, the great hammer Mjolnir emerged from the ground and hovered in the air. My lady love, King Thrym said, take this hammer as my bridal gift. Keep it or give it back to that brute Thor as you wish. Once we are wed, you will be my loyal servant, and I shall be your devoted master, and all will be well in my world. Freya reached out and wrapped one surprisingly meaty fist around the hammer. It started to glow and then dance and crackle with lightning. The sparks leapt and grew until the air was tense and everyone's hair was standing on end. Then Thor began to laugh, a deep and menacing laugh, like a thunderstorm about to break open. My bride, said Thrym. Never have I seen a maiden with such a thunderous laugh. Oh, I am no maiden, bellowed Thor, lightning rolling over his body and burning away the dress, revealing Thor in a bear fur, his muscles rippling with power. I am the god of thunder, and this is how I treat thieves. He swung his hammer and sent King Thrym flying across the castle to smash into the stone of the wall. Oh no, it's Thor, the giants screamed, and they started to run in every direction. Thor, his baby, his love, his Mjolnir back in his fist, laid about him with massive swings and arcing bolts of lightning, laying waste to the throne and the castle and any giant who happened to get in his way. In the end, the wedding hall was a smoking, burning, ruined collection of splinters. Thor went home, Mjolnir safely in hand, and didn't have to fight anyone for another day, at least. The End Thanks for listening! 